Hi, my name is Steve Hookings and I want to talk to you today uh, about uh, how you can connect a software scope up to um, Akai Miniac or any synthesizers but in particular the Miniac um, to look at the output of some of the simple parameters that you can change. So here I'm using a scope by Christian Zeitnitz. Um, this is donationware so if you find it really good please make sure you send him a donation. Uh, Miniac panel is some software I wrote a while ago to understand more about how the Miniac works uh, with a view to building a hardware controller which um, I built for my own use uh, last year. Um, so if you load my software up you basically choose a particular uh, MIDI input. Uh, when you click it goes blue to signify that you've um, actually selected it. I normally check the outputs coming from the panel to the synthesizer by clicking on the ARP latch. This should light up uh, if you're on channel 1 and the synthesizer is set to channel 1 on the Akai, and it does. Um, if you don't light up, either you've got your in, out, out, in, round the wrong way between your MIDI cables, or you're not on channel 1, or you something slightly strange with your synthesizer, and then maybe you can contact me for help. Uh, now, then what I want to see is, can we read data in? So. One of the nice things about the MINIAC is that it has these um, table of contents uh, if you send the right SysX sequence to it. And you can find out more about this um, on the uh, MINIAC site, um, ION group that Dale runs. So if you click on the patch table of contents, for example, it should load up a set of values. Um, you have to be patient. Uh, what I did was I put it in Cubase format because that's the door that I use. Um, and so let's take a very simple uh, waveform, in this case the, the default. Uh, let's find him, where's he gone? There. And so we see he's on 114. So we dismiss the screen, we move this to 114, click the patch request, and it loads up default. And what I've done, uh, you can find this on my site, uh, Miniac Tools site, um, I've added a uh, set of SysXs that will change the uh, mod sources and destinations from their none to, in this case, poly after touch and f f uh, what's that? Fil filter frequency one, um, and this allows you to modify the software um, for these parameters. If you don't set them, the synth will not respond to the control. This is a bug on the Akai, uh, not the software. Um, so if we take the default. Uh, what we see is that we have, this is the mixer layout, so let's just run over the uh, the layout. We've got the, the MIDI input controls, um, we've got the oscillator controls, the mixing between the oscillator, the filter sections, the FX, uh, you've got the envelopes here which can be redeployed depending on their mod sources. Um, uh, you've got a track input, this is a way of taking any one of the inputs you put into it, and there's a plethora of ones you can put in, so any of the input value you put in you can modify it from being in this case a, a straight output or you can give it a step, a sigmoid, what have you, uh, there's different um, values you can set them to to change the output uh, and then effectively you patch this through as a transformation um, and you have the low frequency oscillators, um, you've got the sample hold for generating those quirky computer voices um, and as we say this is the mod matrix um, where you can uh, get a mod source to come in and affect a destination. Typically you might use a low frequency oscillator to put a pitch change in to get that sort of strange Pac-Man type uh, d uh, sound. And you can change the level and the offset. The, these take quite a lot of experimentation and with this software it's kind of easier to see the effect on them. In the hardware uh, using the synthesizer dial input it's harder to see the output because you have to move between four parameters and it's a bit slow um, and also the output you know, is, is difficult to understand. So let's play a, um, an A into this uh, system and like I said I'm going through a mixer, coming through the microphone into uh, Christian's excellent software. It's on auto trigger, so let's play an A in the time domain. I'll just turn the volume down a little bit so that one, I don't deafen you, and two, we see some output. And so there we see uh, an A at 440. If we click on the frequency, you can see that it's telling us that the frequency is about 440. Uh, one of the interesting things you can do, you can zoom on this, and 
and then extrapolate in. So there you can see a single wave and the, the sine effect. Uh, if we look at the shape parameter here, as we move it, it changes the, uh, I guess, the overtones in the sound. Let's have a look. And something I didn't realise, I mean, with a pulse, let's take a pulse. I understood about duty cycle, so what you get is effective a square wave when it's 50-50, and I understood it should give us some sort of phasing of the pulse, so let's look at that. So you see what's happened is that the uh, the phase has moved and the, the inversion as you go from the negative to the plus. But what I didn't realise with the triangle is it's actually going between effectively a triangle wave and then uh, an inverse and a, and a normal uh, saw too. So let's look at that. Let's go back to the sine wave quickly. And we're going to the frequency domain on this thing. And so again, we said it's about 440. And as we bring the filter down, we should be able to attenuate those frequencies off. It's a low pass Moog in this case. So let's have a look. So we can see the effect of the uh, filter frequency one on this first one now. What about if we add uh, a second sine wave in? So let's, let's bring the level up on this one. It's been there all the time. And what we should see is that we get a, a, a doubling of the frequency, sorry, a doubling of the amplitude at that point. So it just gets louder. Let's, let's just validate that. And then we can start to look at some more interesting things like beating. So if you move the pitch of this uh, sine wave relative to its first one, we should start to hear a beating that's familiar, the sort of thickening you've got on the old analog. So let's see if we get that. So let's look at that in the time domain. So what we see there is as the waves move in and out of phase, the constructive and destructive um, uh, uh, interference patterns are changing the sound. Um, so that's just some examples of some of the things you can do with a scope by using this excellent piece of software, free software that Christian's developed. Um, and then you can begin to sort of see the effect of the parameters on your sound, and maybe load up some sound to MP3. Uh, it has an MP3 source here somewhere. Um, so you can load it in from the sound blaster and you can have a look at the waves and then see you know the effect of the parameters see how close you get to it anyway thanks for listening and hope you enjoy playing with the miniac cheers bye